do like the cleft palate. What is the cleft palate? The cleft and the cleflet. Um, it's a congenital defect of the palate, which is a longitudinal fissure exists exists in the roof of the mouth. I'm going to show you some pictures in the next slides where I can explain it better. Um, the cleft lip is also known as a hair lip. This is the, that's the scientific name of it. Name for it. Um, which is a congenital It's a congenital um, deformed lip usually to use, use the pointers. <laughs> it's a congenital de deformed lip usually to um, the upper like the upper part of the mouth of the person and it resembles the cleft lip um, of the hair. For example, I'm gonna show you some pictures where you, I'm gonna explain it better. Um, the Harlem Society in the Institution in Honduras. Um, I started with five students in Honduras and in hopes of making it big down there. And um, a lot of people are calling and emailing because they want to join the program. That's one of the things. Well, um, here are the figures. Um, as you can see in the, the diagram, we can see a shell that is born in, that was born um, normal without no defect, and we see the cleft lip. We see the cleft lip um, where it's not a major defect, and then we see when the when the the person was born with a bilateral um, cleft lip with both where you have the openings from the nose, both nodes, and make the bilateral cleft lip with a full palate involvement. Um, the cleft palate there. Here we have a, a normal palate where it's all healthy, was born. And down here we have the cleft, the soft cleft palate, where it's not much of a um, much of a effect on the person. We are where it's benign. It's not a malignant. Well, <laughs> that word. Um, and in the other in the other diagram we have the the malignant. Um, cleft palate. Sorry, my Spanish accent is coming out. So. Um, methods of procedures. Um, well, in order, in down in Honduras, my mentor and I, we we were concerned about the different parts of the country where they um, they didn't have this research at. They were not conducting this research at. Where the patients were not getting the help they needed. So my mentor and I created a questionnaire where we when that allowed us to ask questions in another cities of other states, which are called departments in Honduras, which is the same thing. Yeah, um, we have um, the exact research in the country we visited, um, we concentrated in two cities, um, La Ceiba, which is found in Departamento de Atlantida, which is the state of Atlantida, and we have Trujillo Colón and Tocoa Colón, which are found in Colón, Colón City. <laughs> Okay, um, the results of our founding findings were that um, in the Salvador, the Salvador Perez um, Hospital in the Rio Colón, um, we found out that the hospital does not keep information on the cloud, the, 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 the 
left out of my lip. They don't have a registry where they register the, the patients. So that's a critical thing because um, how do we will know what is being done um, in, on, on this specific deformity in Honduras? Well, 90% of the people that have the pathology do not get medical help due to their um, economic background. They don't, they cannot afford health care, and they don't have the money just to get the surgery for their kids. So most of the time, it's the only way for the Americans that goes to Honduras every year to so they can get a surgery, plastic surgery. surgery. Um, Hospital Atlantida in Aceiva, um, they reference the patients to another hospital which is found in San Pedro Sula, another city, one of uh, the other biggest city in Honduras, which is known as the industrial city, where those are the only, the, um, San Pedro Sula and Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras, are the only two places where you can get um, the cleft path, the cleft path surgical procedures. Well, part of children's society initiation handlers. Um, as you can see, these are the five students that started the program. And there's, um, we have Pamela Pacho, we have Jeffrey Solano, we have Saira Rao, um, Dixon Witi and Farita Raos. Those are the four, the five students that started the program, and more people are asking, we're calling to join the program. Um, photos, you know, the process, the application process, which was crowded, so not that crowded, but yeah, you know what I mean. And the group picture of four students, they're located at the moment in the Uzigalpa. Um, and these are extra pictures that I took in one of the museums, and this is my former school. Like, my, let's say, sixth grade, I went there from first to sixth grade. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Haddad, um, Dr. Carlos Flores. Dr. Haddad is here and his crew. Um, Dr. Carlos Flores is the doctor that helped me in Honduras and conducting the experiment, asking the questions, um, referencing me to the other hospitals in the country. From the university for their help, um, part of the society. Um, we have the Honduran Medical Institute and the ACS staff. Ms. Noreen, because she introduced me to this program. Um, Mr. Hector Hernandez, my grandfather, who inculcated education in my family, and family, friends, and of course, you guys for listening.